Welcome to the Once in a Lifetime series. In this video here, you're going to see the part two of going up the Oregon coastline. Here we're going to explore from Florence, Oregon, all the way up to Astoria. Across the Astoria Bridge into Washington State. This is a once in a lifetime trip. One for the memory books and one I will never forget. So sit back, enjoy, and the journey starts right now. The journey continues. We're heading up 101. We're going to go up to a place called Winchester Bay. And check it out. There, I, I think there's even a lighthouse up there. Isn't that? But look at this pretty drive. Just gorgeous. Okay, you can see there's water on the right, trees on the left. little coastal overcast not too bad it's chilly but not cold but when it comes to the coast any day's a good day rain shine fog or drizzle here. This is called Umqua River Lighthouse. There's a bunch of campgrounds in here according to Google Maps. Okay, we're going to make a left here. Then we'll go find that lighthouse. There's a Coast Guard station, several county parks, state park, campgrounds, marina, I mean this uh, Winchester Bay has about everything in it. So let's go check it out. Nice road, very scenic drive. Look at the tree cover. Beautiful here. Right. There's supposed to be sand dunes down in here too. And that's amazing that all that sand and the trees go up grow up through it. There's a maybe a day use center there. Looks like a little pond. Uh, I see the top of the lighthouse. See it on the right hand side? Right there. And it's working too. There it is. Let me get turned around and uh, park, and we'll go check this thing out. Cool. Wow, look at all the housing. This is houses for the Coast Guard. Sign there says, no trespassing, be respectful. What a great place to live. You're overlooking the ocean. You got your own lighthouse with county parks. Umqua River Lighthouse. It's early in the morning. There ain't no way you're going to go in it. But it's turning. There's a light going in it. That thing's old. There it is. Winchester Bay salmon. Oh, I bet the salmon do run here. Yeah. We are right there. Oh, 
interesting. I never thought about salmon running. Of course, it's Oregon. Duh. <laughs> This is their home. Good for them. They earn it. Keep our water safe. Look at all the sand dunes down there. I'll drive down in there and we'll get a closer look at the dunes. Clouds are getting thicker. Yeah, these are like apartments for all the Coast Guard staff here. Okay, here's a little gift shop museum. They're not open, it's way early in the morning. In case you haven't noticed, I like getting out early. Looks like they got a camp host. All these places, there's several camp hosts. Um, I bet that's his RV right there. It wouldn't be a bad gig, sign up to be a camp host on the coast in the summer. That sign, that's a county RV park there. County park. We went through a state park back there. Then the Coast Guard station. Okay, I bet this will take us back to those dunes. That lighthouse is to the left up the hill. So this is kind of the area we were looking down on right here. Those look like apartments there too. On the left. Look at all the sand, huh? Now these are county parks. There's a campground. They all have signs for county. How many campgrounds are in here? <laughs> of course with the dunes. I know that's a whole world by itself. Okay, these are their, what do they call them, staging areas. Probably where they park their trailers. Get their uh, dune buggies ready to go out. And it's got a fee. Four dollars for a day. A little restroom. Well, let me get parked. Let's walk over the ocean. Then we'll get a good look at this place. This is really cool here. Boy, some of this sand is so powdery, it's really hard to walk in. Especially when you're old like me. <laughs> yeah, let's go, I can hear the roar. You can hear the foghorn, too, going off. There's the ocean! Yay! There's the jetty to the harbor. You could see it better from up top. There's the marker 118. Big 
jetty. Look at that. That protects that harbor there. That's where all the boats come in and out. We'll go up that road. We'll check out their harbor. That must be towards Winchester. Oh, there's the lighthouse. See it? And there's all the sand dune right there, right below it. That's what we're looking at from up top. Well, cool, but also you can see the storm front coming in. It's supposed to rain here a little later. I'm sure I'll drive right into it. Alright, I'm going to just double back on that road. I'll head back towards 101 and see if we can't find that Winchester Harbor. There were signs for it back there when we came down this way. So let's go check it out. Okay, this says day use area. There's a boat marina several campgrounds we're right along 101 here winchester bay recreation area look at all those campgrounds douglas county parks looks like a memorial here for jack unger and names of uh, lost ones at sea pretty impressive here There's the road we drove up. We're just down, right, right around that bend is where all those county parks were in the jetty. There's an RV park right there. Another one. Swing around here. Here's their harbor. Look at all the slips there. Probably the bigger boats go up farther. But look at them all. Look how many boats they can fit in here. This place is huge. Absolutely huge. Looks like they got restaurants. That's dry camp. Those are for tents. And more trailers right there. Huh. What a place. I've never seen nothing like this ever. With this many campgrounds in one area. Talk about RV friendly with all the campgrounds, RV parks, you got the harbor, restaurants, Winchester Bay is it. Alright, let's jump back on 101. We'll start trucking north. I'm sure this rain's going to catch up with me sooner or later. But we'll just keep driving till it does. Wasn't Winchester Bay cool with all those campgrounds, sand dunes? What a Shangri-La for RVing. Alright, this is Reedsport. Right on to 101. 
small town Oregon, small town USA. That glare with the clouds kind of darkens the camera. Look at all the buildings, all flat top, low cut. Typical coastal town. Wonder what the winters are like here. I'm sure they're a little bit chilly. Should be a big bridge up here to cross pretty soon. go across the bridge. I've crossed so many bridges I can't remember them all. <laughs> Unreal. Too cool. This looks like an old timer too. You know these are operated bridges. There's big boats that come in and out of here. Well I know I'm gonna hit some rain up here soon. Look how the spans are. Can you imagine the amount of traffic over the time that's been through here? Unreal. Be nice to get a picture of this thing. Okay, 101 here. Whoop! That sign said Island. Been something Island. You know what? Let's see. Oh, there's a big old fishing boat on the left. Looks like on a dock. Let me pull in here real quick. Let me pull down in here and see what, what's down here. What a rough low road. We're right next to 101 here. So we're... That boat's right across the road. See that blue boat over in that yard? That's what I spotted right there. It's in dry dock. I don't know if that's a boat repair place or logging, but look at all the boats. Okay, there's the bay for Reedsport. That's a big building. I can't see it. The bridge is right back there. That's a bridge we just crossed, Reedsport Bridge. And there's more of the waterway. Man, I bet the fishing is just awesome here. Low tide, you can see a lot of the bank. There's the 101. That's the way we're going. We're heading up there right now. Well, cool. I thought it'd be worth a quick shot. I was hoping to catch more of the bridge, but oh well. But that boatyard's pretty cool. That was cool, but my van is full of mosquitoes. I was attacked. <laughs> I mean literally attacked with mosquitoes. Whoa. I'd never seen so many. Not in a long time. You go fishing there, you better bring you a better sit inside a net with a bunch of bug repellent. My goodness. There's that boat yard straight across. They're the big cranes. They must work on the big stuff there. Probably big fishing boats, I bet. Alright, here we go. We're going to head up towards Florence, Oregon. I've been keeping an eye on my uh, weather app on my phone. And I'm definitely running into the rain. It's not too much farther up the road. Looks like this past Florence. Which Florence is probably about another 20 miles. Maybe a little farther. Yeah, I bet the fishing is just something else here. Look at all that water. And mosquitoes. <laughs> A 
quite a few houses up here on the right. Everyone's got a fishing boat here too, look at it. And firewood stacked up. We really don't have a set destination. Uh, I'm just, I'm definitely going to go past Florence. Three years ago I filmed around there a lot when I came down, so I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time, probably just drive through and then keep going north, see what else we can find in, get into up there. I do remember about Florence, it was all the sand dune campgrounds, where they, kind of like back there at uh, Winchester, where they had all the dunes. People brought out their four-wheelers and camped. Look at the pines. That's a cool shot, except for the clouds. Pretty dry. There's a state park sign. Man, they are everywhere. You know, they advertise on television here that you can camp at. There's over 200 or 300 state parks. That's a cool looking walkway. Or overpass. Anyway, uh, did not camp at the same one for like in eight months. Unreal. That's how many state parks there are. All right, I think we're getting close to town. Trees are getting smaller, look at that. I think up here in the downtown area there were some stores, if I remember right. I spent like three days here at the Elks. I stayed at the Elks Lodge here in Florence. And kind of drove around. I remember it was super foggy. Of course, when I came down three years ago, it was in August. So the weather pattern was different. Okay, we should be getting close. I keep getting a few drops of rain on the windshield too. Not much yet though. What a nice area here. Yep, I can see see the water, I can see the town. Should be a bridge coming up right here. Best Western right on the water. RV parks everywhere. Yep, here's the bridge. Here's the Florence, Oregon Bridge. Look at this thing. It, look at the pillars. Doesn't that look cool? Old, 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 like me. Yay, made it. If you go back in my playlist, you'll find videos about Florence. I'm not going to reshoot that stuff, refilm it. I'm pretty sure I walked around Old Town down there, off to the right. And I went down by the harbor when I was here last time. Kind of looks the same. Well, I'm going to find a store up here and uh, get some fuel, some ice. Then we're going to keep on going up 101. Take a break a minute. Get in the parking lot here, get parked. I'm gonna run in, get some ice, go over there, get some fuel, and we're out of here. Well, all stocked up. Get on up the road, 
like I said, I don't have a set destination. I'm going to just kind of play it by ear, see what the weather is. If it starts raining, I'm going to keep on driving. Yay, I see ocean. Yeah. It's a view, cloudy view, but who cares? It's a view. Any day is a good day to be on the ocean anyway, though, huh? <laughs> Should be a lighthouse up here I think we might be able to check out. Once I get up here a little ways, I'll stop. Check the maps here. I've seen something about this before. You can walk down. Looks all closed. Looks like they're working on their parking lot over there. Oh well. Well, next time. Let's keep on going. Got that whole thing blocked off. Sea line caves. Okay. Oh well. Wow. Look at the stone walk wall there. I mean, we are right on the side of a cliff on 101 here. There's a pull out right up here. I'll keep going low ways, find something. I'll pull off, we'll get some uh, some kind of shot or scenery. But look at that rock right next man this is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous we're just winding along well that sign just said Aceta Bend Lighthouse half mile Yay. that ought to be cool not raining yet uh, tunnel hang on I love these things. Here we go. Alright, we made it. Yay! Wow, look at the crane sticking up there. Okay, we're here. This is it. Sita Lighthouse. I missed a turn. Darn it. Ah, here's another one. I'm going to pull in here. Yep. Cedar Bend Lighthouse. Nice. doing some serious work. There's steel beams all over that bridge. Looks like they're reinforcing it. Very serious work. Yay, there it is. There's a lighthouse. Looks like a building or a house or something up there too. Let's check it out. a ways up there. Oh well. I need the exercise. Five dollar. Okay, let me get a ticket real quick. Throw it in the van and we'll head up the path. All right, half mile up. Looks like a well done pathway. I 
got restrooms here. Nice pathway. We're gonna go through the forest. There's a storyboard about the lighthouse. This is picturesque, a uh, little walkway bridge. I can hear water running down the mountain. Hear it? Like a little stream. Heading to the ocean. Pretty. Well, how well done. Very pretty. It's not a steep grade. This got to go a little slow. <laughs> Catch my breath now and then. But very green, very plush. Sure smell that salty air of the ocean. My goodness. Hey, there's the bridge. There's a good shot of it. In the parking lot. This is just pretty. Look how pristine. There's that house with the red roof. Wow, look at the roots on this tree here. Check this out. Look at them, how they grow sideways back into the hill. My goodness. We're getting up here quite a ways. Now look at the view. Look at that. Wow. Huh. That is just gorgeous. Rocky refuse for all the birdies. I heard a sea lion a little bit ago, too. But you could see it all from up here, whale watching and everything. I like their little signs, lighthouse. Alrighty, oof. Here's the... Uh, Hard work. Looks like there used to be two or three buildings here. And this one's closed. Closed to public. Can't go inside. Was probably uh, workers of the tower. Lighthouse tower. Through the years. But these come up here and horses and stuff. This thing is old, old, old. Looks, looks like it's restored. Huh. And check out the view they got. Look at the view. Can you imagine? People a hundred years ago had the same view. Look at that. Outstanding. All right, see the lighthouse up there a little ways? Let's head on up there, check that out. Oh man, I'm glad I stopped here. It's okay, I'm getting rained on a little bit too. Sprinkles. Look at the car, someone drove up here. How'd they get to drive? how they made it here. There must be another road. I bet off 101. I bet there's another road. What's this? Gift shop. All closed up.
picnic area with a cool view. My goodness. Waves crashing between them rocks up there. Okay, onward and upward. We gotta be getting close, I hope. <laughs> This forest looks like something out of a spooky movie. Look at that. <laughs> Yikes. What's this one? About the road. How they build it. Look at the horses. Well, they hand built this thing. All right now we're getting way up. That's way down there now. We're close. We're almost up top. There's the lighthouse. Yay! I survived it. Well, very well done. It's closed to the public. You can't go inside. History of the lighthouses along the Oregon coast wonder how many ships it saved with the light. This is really well done. Benches. Sit here and have a good view of the ocean. All the workers that worked here. Their lives. All of it. And then the best part. There's your view. No words needed for that view. There you have it, a Cedar Bend Lighthouse off the 101. Pretty. Man, I'm glad I stopped here. Nice treat. I'm getting sprinkled on, not bad. Look at the water hit that rock. Look at that. You could just make a movie out of something like that. Alright, now the best part. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> Heading down. The spooky forest. Here's another look at that sign. See the two buildings? Looks like there was two homes. There's pictures of the old caretakers of the lighthouse. Hard work, hard life up here, I bet. Well, if you're out this way, I'd definitely come up here and check it out. The view's worth it.
if you can make the hike. I mean, that's not the best, easiest hike up here. That sign said a half mile. I think they're right. <laughs> starting to sprinkle rain. I'm starting to get wet. Time to get to the van. Alright, from here I'm going to head up to keep going up the 101 up towards Newport. Hopefully it doesn't rain too much. I'll film what I can along the way. Okay, I want to go 101 north. So it looks like we get to drive under the bridge under construction. Here we go. Thank you, sir. But they see a lot of people every day come down in here. What a great way to get in and out of here. They got entrances and exits on both sides of 101. That's very smart. it is pouring rain. I keep running in and out of these showers and some are just heavy. So I'm going to keep on trucking. I'm going to go up through a town called Newport. Because I'm not going to fight the weather anymore. I'm just going to keep right on going. It's no sense staying in the campground when all I do is sit inside the van. So might as well drive. Google map this area up here a little bit. Uh, once we get across the bridge, there's uh, another lighthouse. Thought we'd check that out. And if it ain't raining too bad, there's uh, like a fisherman district, a bunch of fishing boats. So we'll at least get a little video of the bridge and whatever we can. Hopefully, I mean, these showers, they start and stop, so you never know. But hopefully, we'll get break up here when I get up this direction. Well, I see a little blue sky off to the left. We're in town. This is Newport, Oregon. Here's the bridge. Almost all these bridges are under some kind of construction. Well, it's summertime. When can they do it? Hey, look at the blue sky. Okay, once we get across, I gotta take an immediate right and exit. Then that lighthouse is supposed to be off. I don't know, it'd be on the what? Left hand side. All right, here's the Newport Bridge. This is a big one too, holy moly. All these bridges, look at the concrete pillars they have. Aren't those cool? Wow, look at this, we are way up here. Big old span bridge. More pillars. All right, now I gotta look for that street or exit. Yeah, they're working on this one. Right here. Okay. I'm going to take this and go down by the lighthouse. That piping. That must be sandblasting equipment. They must be painting all these things. Well, hopefully it stops raining long enough I can get a few pictures at least. Hopefully. Okay, I think this is it. Alright. 
head on down. And I'll find a place to park down here. There's the bridge. And it's raining. This started again. The clouds rolling through. It just changes by the minute. Alright. You guys can sit here with me and watch it rain. <laughs> okay. As soon as it quits, I'll get out and we'll walk around a minute. Okay, it stopped. Yaquina Bay? Did I say that right? I think so. Nice, nice viewing area. There's the bridge. Isn't that impressive? Look at that thing. My goodness. We just crossed that. Even with the clouds and everything, didn't that look cool? There's the bay. Fishing boats heading out right now to go fish. It's the lighthouse. Looks like they got a tower there. Coast Guard. I'm sure they're on duty. Pretty little park here. Right over here is the ocean. Looks like you got a walk down. You can go down to the beach. Lighthouse. It's open 12 to 4. I'm not going to do that one today. Come on, keep on trucking. Let's see what the storyboards say. There's all the history. Nice. Thing still used. We are there. Yay. Okay, well, time to jump in the van. I want to keep on going. See, now look, it quit. Quit <laughs> raining. But there's plenty more coming in. <laughs> it's supposed to be like this for the next couple of days. Let's go over to the other side of the bridge. I'll go down by the pier or harbor, take a few videos, and we'll hit the road. Plenty of day use parking here. Be a good little stop. No camping in this area. There was uh, state parks on the south side of the bridge. I didn't stop at any of those. My goal is to make Tillamook. There's a big Elks Lodge RV park in Tillamook. That's where I'm heading today. I'm going to stop here, get a quick shot of this bridge. This is a big bridge. This is one of the bigger ones. Bet they're painting it. Look at all the crews. Probably getting rained out. We got everything tarp, all on pipes. Something going on. All right. get the way back. <laughs> I get a kick out of the comments when I read it. I waved. Yeah. Cool. 
All right, well, let's go down by the boats, get a few pictures. Well, <laughs> well, it's still not raining. Let's see, I think it's this street here. I Google mapped this earlier, so I halfway know where I'm at. There's a Coast Guard office down here. Then there's a like a fisherman's wharf, I guess you'd call it. All the seafood places. Bet all the boats come in. Probably get really good seafood. You can really smell it in the air, the old salty, fishy smell. Look at the murals on the building. Those are cool. grab a parking place we'll get a few pictures of the boats big boats here pretty look at the reflection of the clouds in the water look at that that's a photographer's dream right there to get that kind of flat water with the reflection A lot of commercial boats. Look at them big ones way across the water. Those are like research vessels. Yeah, look at the seals. Can you hear them? Well, pretty cool place. Look at all the names. One named Judy. Boat named Judy. Griffin. <laughs> Who knows? I'm sure there's a meaning. Look at them two seals next. They must have bait or something there. And there's a shot of the bridge with the boat. Look at that. And the clouds. Pretty. Make a postcard picture. Well, this would be a fun place to explore. Come here and spend a few days. Check out all the shops down here and the seafood. This is definitely a port town. Shipping ports. All those shops all fixed up. Probably gets busy here on the weekends, I bet. If the walls could talk, huh? I can't complain too much. I've been pretty blessed with the weather since I've been in Oregon. So, a little bit of rain, oh well. Alright, go back up. Jump on 101 North. Keep on trucking. This is all Coast Guard in here. Their offices. Right there on the left. The red roof it says Coast Guard. Hey, there's the bridge again. It says one oh one North. That's us. Well, get up here a little bit. I'll stop and get a little bit of fuel. Take a break. And then about another 60, 70 miles up to Tillamook. That uh, Elks Lodge RV Park, it's huge. It's supposed to have like 60 sites. And it's actually out of town. It's before you get to Tillamook. Pretty good sized town here, it keeps going. All the old buildings, history, 
all kinds of history here. Well, we're almost through town. I'll just keep on trucking if I see something good. We're going to film it. Well, guess what you get with a rain? A rainbow. <laughs> Had to stop. Look at that thing. Right out in the ocean, there's your pot of gold. Isn't that pretty? You got a little blue sky with it. Small boat out there, they're fishing, huh? We need a good stomach to be bouncing up and down all day, one of them things. Pretty area. Got a nice break. Well, what do you say? Let's keep on trucking. Well, what a difference a couple days makes, huh? <laughs> Blue sky, look at this, no rain. I made it up here to Tillamook Elks, been here for two days. The storms have finally passed through, got some wind. But guess what? What a pretty place to stay. They got over 60 sites here. I'm an Elks member. There's uh, over a thousand Elk Lodges across the United States that has RV facilities of some type. They're not all big RV parks. But Elks is a good organization, belonged to them for years. But look at the greenery. So let's get back on the road. We're going to hit 101 North. Say goodbye to my friends here at the Oaks. What a great lodge this is. This is uh, one of the few that are this big with RV sites. Absolutely perfect. And I really needed a break. That rain inside the van was really getting to me. So away we go. I thought we'd go first up to the Tillamook Air Museum, explore that. Then there's a cheese factory, Tillamook Cheese Factory, and then from there we're going to continue on north up this beautiful Oregon coast on Highway 101. blue sky here. Anyway, we're heading out to the Tillamook Air Museum. Ought to be uh, cool. You know, one thing about these small towns and their museums, it's a labor of love. These guys put their heart and soul in this stuff. Most of us volunteer. I always like to go and see them and support it. I think it's really cool. And wait till you see this building. It is so impressive looking from the outside. I can't wait to see the inside. The building alone is worth seeing. This was an old naval base, I guess. Uh, blimps. 
This is where they had the blimps. During World War II, probably World War I, too. Now there's, uh, looks like sheriffs, state patrol. A sign back there said Youth Authority, probably their prison or correction facility. Looks like a park out here and everything, too. So there's military buildings. And I spotted what looked like a sawmill at the other end of the museum building. So there's quite a bit out here. Kind of cool. Alright, let's go find this thing. Okay, make it right here. Yeah, some of these buildings are really old. Look at them. But look at this thing. I mean, look at the door on the end. <laughs> it is huge. I can't wait to see the inside. But blimps, well, you know how big a blimp is. It's probably where they built it and worked on them and stuff. Door, uh, whatever they call it. The door uh, track. <laughs> up there. We got some old planes sitting outside. You know, it's a pretty small town to have a big air museum. Let me pull around here, we'll get a better shot of this thing. I'll get out and we'll take a look. <laughs> Let me look at that. That's concrete. Boy, I bet that rumbles when them things open. <laughs> Holy moly. That's a ton of weight. Alright, enough horsing around. They're going to open here shortly and then uh, I'll go on in. We'll check it out. Okay, here we go. It says open. Tillamook Air Museum. I think it's ten bucks to get in. Restaurant. It was ten fifty. Let's go wander. Oh man. Look at the honeycomb steel structure. Look at that. Get some planes are in here. Let's go take a walk. But look at this thing. My good. It's like a big honeycomb. My goodness. Alright. Planes. We're here for planes. <laughs> Not very good lighting. Sorry about that. Camera's probably going goofy. That's cool. I got a few. A lot of donations here, probably. Got some planes. Some old cars up here. What's that? Helium room. Wow. That's how they blow up the blimps. A lot of story on the walls. History. History, history. Small town USA. Let's check out their helium. Look at that pump. <laughs> My goodness. Look at that thing. That pumped the gas into the blimps. Wonder how long that took fill one of them things. There's a 
railroad car bringing in the helium. Nice. Cool. Take that old car for a spin. Very well done. You know, I mean, once again, small town. Well, there's a jet. Yeah. <laughs> now, how'd you like to fly in that thing? Two seats in an engine. <laughs> Holy moly. Wonder what they used that for. Man. That'd be okay, though. Go check out some RV parks. There. Now there's a little guy. There's a jet. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's go check out that building now. My goodness. That is something to see. Kind of cool in here too. A little chilly. Wow. Look at there. There's a chart. Look at the size difference. Hindenburg, way up there, Akron. Navy blimps. They could fit a big one in here. I'm still in awe of this building. My goodness. Old train car. It is really, really dark in here, so the camera is kind of going all over the place. Sorry about that. I can see it on the little screen. Hey, they got RVs down at the end. They, they store RVs in here, too. Look at that. That's all RV storage. RV and boat storage right there. Yeah. UFO blimp. Look how long this building is, though. I mean, my goodness. Some old engines. You know, a ton of time and effort went into this. People painted up them old planes. be good for kids to come here. Wow, what's left of a wreck. Look at that. Huh. That makes it real. Hall of World War II. Well, kind of like a scale model city forts buildings kind of tells a story there huh I would love to see them doors open. <laughs> just a building, just to come see this building's a worth it. A little room here full of pictures and history cool
And next door, the guy said they got a little movie theater. You can sit in there and watch movies about probably the blimps and everything. That'd be interesting. Well, you kind of need to see this in person. It's so dark in here. It's really, really hard to film. I know the video's uh, in and out and shaky. Nothing I could do about it. But definitely, this is one for the books. What a well done small town USA museum. Labor of love, like I said earlier. Definitely well done. Definitely worth $10. Gotta stop and check this thing out. Well, not bad. Tillamook Air Museum. I highly recommend it. Just to see the building is worth 10 bucks. I've never seen anything structured like that in my life. Something that massive. Unbelievable. All right, we say we'll head on into town and go check out one of them cheese factories. Tillamook cheese. It's one of my favorite. I buy it all the time. And still got blue sky. Oh, man, after all that rain for a few days. What a nice break. Okay, let's head on into town. Get back up here on the 101, start trucking north. And go check out the cheese places. The big one's Tillamook. There's another one called Blue Heron. French cheese or something like that. Anyway, it looked co kind of cool. So let's go check them both out. Tillamook is a very quaint and pristine agriculture area. They got dairy farms, all kinds of stuff. And it's really close to the ocean, not too far. All right, here we go. Welcome to Tillamook. Big sign there that says, Welcome to Tillamook. <laughs> so let's check out Tillamook. This looks like a one way. They got a one way in, one way out. There's a motel, the Big Apple, Red Apple. Small town USA. Gotta love it. I love these little towns, driving through them. Churches, some gas stations, see what we have up here. Ford dealer right there. Because along the coast, there's not that many big towns. Most of them are this size. Good size Chevron there on the right. Looks like car dealers. Just all kinds of little businesses. Yeah, and Wells Fargo there on the left. Looks like now the Shell Station up here. Home Life Furniture and Appliances. I bet that's a busy place. Look at the buildings. Look how uh, dated they are. Isn't that cool? Those are old, old, old. Both these cheese places are in the north end of town. I drove through here three years ago. I only stopped at the Tillamook one. I didn't do this Blue Heron one. But we'll do both. I'll stop at both of them. Okay, that looks like a town park there on the right. Pretty. 
Be sure to check out my website, rvertv.tv. Sign up for the free newsletter. We have free screensaver downloads, all kinds of activity books, coloring books, and brand new recipe book that just got released. Once again, check out rvertv.tv. Here we are, wine tasting, cheese. This is it. Blue Heron French Cheese Company. I don't know if this was here three years ago or not. It had to have been. I just didn't pay attention. Of course, all the ads, I got a pet petting farm. You can pet the animals. Huge parking lot. You can see that RV there. They do allow overnight camping for like a night. All you gotta do is check in their uh, office and sign in. Give me your license plate number, but you can stay here overnight for free. All right, let's go check it out. Like an old barn building there. Blue Heron. Very nicely done. They they got some dollars tied up. Got electric chargers there for cars. Uh, gotta have the chickens. Look at them things. <laughs> Bunch of noisemakers, huh? That's funny. Oh, they even got a sign for Harvest Host. RV parking only, no tents. Check in. I don't, I don't know if they make their own cheese here or they just sell it. Like up at the Tillamook, you can actually see where the, how they make it. Not sure here. Pretty place, huh? Over there, see the water way off? That's Tillamook Bay. There's a bay here that actually goes all the way out to the ocean. I know there's a lot of dairy. Well, that other cheese place, they own a good chunk of this town. All the farms, the dairy farms, the milk. That's looking straight back at downtown. We just drove through there. There's a 101. Let's go inside. See what they got. What a cute little picnic area. Look how green. They got canopies. Perfect place. Taste the wine, eat the cheese. Welcome to the Blue Heron Cheese Factory. Let's go on in. Definitely wine tasting, gifts, snacks, postcards. It's cool that there are harvest hosts where you can actually spend a night here. That way you can taste more than one bottle, huh? <laughs> Very well done. All these wineries, they really look good. 
Got all the specialized jellies, jams, candies. Like they serve food here too. Quite a little gift shop, very nice. Definitely stop here, try their cheese, try their wine. Why not? Okay, let's hit the road. Okay, glad I stopped here. Tillamook is just a cool little town. I did talk to the lady inside. You can stay up to two nights in an RV for free if you want. So there is free RV camping, so use it. And also, it's good for them. They need the business. During the summer, this is a very seasonal place. In the winter, they don't get too much traffic. I did sample the cheese. It's good. <laughs> All right, we're gonna make it right up here, start heading up 101 North. About two, three miles up is the actual Tillamook Cheese Factory. We're gonna check that one out next. Tillamook cheese. I must say, I buy their cheese. I like it. I've always purchased their products. Always tasted good. This is where they make it. They got a massive parking lot out here. You can park RVs. You can park anything out here. What a huge place. They own farms. They got their own creamery. They make their own ice cream. This is where they actually make their products. Look at all the trucks. Isn't Tillamook a pretty place? Look at it. Look how green. Little ponds down there. What a nice place to live. You know, you're far enough away from the ocean, you wouldn't get the fog maybe as bad. I don't know. Look how pretty. There's Tillamook Bay. There's the water out there. Farms everywhere. Pretty, pretty place. Let's head on in. They are open. Family's getting their selfies. Isn't that cool? Family photos. Look how pretty the clouds are, too. There's the big old Tillamook cow. Big old painting on the glass there. Tillamook Creamery. Let's go on in. Check it out. This place is huge. On the walls, I got storyboards. Tells you all the history here. Began at all 1909. My goodness, over a hundred years. So you just kind of read, and you can just sneak your way back to the free sample table. <laughs> Cheese.
cheese everywhere. Look at these people. Excuse me. And they got like a little uh, cafe, snack bar back here. Get coffee and ice cream. Ooh, the ice cream. Look at that. I will snag one of those for I get back in that van and hit the road, huh? After here, we're heading up 101. There's the Tillamook van. You can get your picture taken in. Kids love that. Huh? Here's our gift shop, store, whatever you want to call it. Snacks and cheese and ooh, wine. I bet it's good. All these places really have the good stuff. There you go. Here's all their cheeses back here. Well, this is just one busy place. Upstairs is where you can, they got the viewing area. See how they make it? So let's head on up there. And life-size storyboards, look at that. Extremely well done marketing here. Very family oriented, highly recommended even milk a cow <laughs> isn't that fun okay look at these windows here we go this is where they make the cheese you can actually stand up here and watch them all day if you want big vats of milk getting ready Watch a little movie, how cheese is made. Pretty cheesy, huh? Well, we'll take one last look here. What's that say? Pack cheese, quality checkpoint. Wonder if they get to taste it down there. Okay, save the best for the last. Here's where you taste the cheese. Look on the wall, all those buckets represent a different uh, flavor, brand, whatever you want to call it. The cheese, my goodness. They really have it here. Okay, we're gonna wind around, get in line, and get some samples. Okay, my two favorites, Monterey Jack and Cheddar. I'm gonna munch these on for a minute and then we're gonna head on out of here. Well, now you've seen it, that's the Tillamook Cheese Factory here in Tillamook, Oregon. Very popular place, very heavily uh, tourist area too. A lot of people stop here, here. Around. Check it out. Well, before I leave, I'm going to buy me a couple uh, packs of cheese here. How are you today? I'm well, thank you.
Dude, this one I have a really, really big one. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. You go. You're welcome. Have a good day. Back on 101, we'll continue up Pacific Coast Highway. Okay, here we go. The goal is to get up to Nehalem State Park. Gonna camp there. We'll see what we find along the way. Should be something good. At least we got blue sky and no rain. Goodness. <laughs> So long, Tillamook. Cool old town, pretty good size. They got stores, you can stock up supplies, RV. Once again, I want to thank everyone at the Elks Lodge for having me for a couple days. That really helped out. You know, 101 here at Pacific Coast Highway, it's a good road, but it is heavily traveled. Very congested, very fast paced, kind of hard to film. Especially the farther north we get. We're getting up here a ways up in Oregon now. Called uh, Garibaldi Bay. Uh, I stayed there three years ago. There's a couple RV parks. It's really cool. Good place to stretch your legs. They had a little, couple of restaurants to get a cup of coffee. So, just enjoy the trip up here. We're not traveling that far miles wise. We're only going to go over, I don't know, 50, 60 miles from Tillamook. Garibaldi. Yay. I need to get a little fuel too while I'm here. But it was kind of cool. I remember there was a sawmill. And I stayed here with my old dog Scooby. We we walked around the water. It was this kind of unique place. They had a ton of boats. So anyway, it'd be a good little pit stop on the way up to that state park. closer to the end uh, after this park it'll be that Fort Stevens and that's it we'll be done in Oregon alrighty all fueled up you know in Oregon they uh, it's full service they pump your gas I'm not used to it <laughs> I just want to jump out and start pumping, but here they come up and say, how much, sir? Alrighty, let's go over to that dock. <laughs> Old train, heard the whistle. That's cool. Alright, gonna make a left, we're gonna pull in here to Garibaldi Harbor. Right up here on the right, there's that sawmill, man. They cut them big logs all day long. That's all you could hear. <laughs> I didn't realize that after I stayed in the RV park, that I signed up for the RV park. Right there on the right. They got these massive saws right there. Then right on the left is where I stayed. There's their, that's the port RV park. And then there's another one up here on the right. There's also a motel here. There's some little restaurants. It's a cool little place. You can buy uh, the seafood right off the dock. All of it. All right, let me pull up here. I'll get parked. We'll walk around in a minute. Here we 
are the Port Garibaldi. Now that's the Tillamook Bay. That goes all the way. We're not that far from Tillamook. Kind of wound around the bay there. Oh, look at these windmills here. Let's check these out. Here's a work of art. Uh -huh. Cool. Boat charters. I thought about doing it, but not this trip. And little shops here. You can get bait, restaurants, food, all kinds of stuff. Look at them guys, huh? Hey, matey. Place probably been there a long time. Here's another one. Fresh seafood. The spot. Oysters, crabs, clams, and fish. Nice. And here's all the boats. Small commercial fishermen. There's the seafood places. I wonder how much ice they produce to keep all that stuff. That has to be massive. Keep it all frozen on the boats. All right, well, let's get out of here. I can grab a cup of coffee and hit the road. Back on 101. A neat little place. Good place to get seafood if you're hungry. Heading down 101. I ate here uh, when I was here last time. It was pretty good food. <laughs> True seafood. And the RV parked there on the right. It was okay. I had no complaints. They had showers and restrooms. I forget. It was only like about 30 bucks to stay there. It wasn't bad at all. Just that right there on the left, that sawmill. <laughs> I mean, those are big logs that they cut. Huge. Just got, I don't know, 30 miles or so up to that Nahalem Bay State Park. Gonna spend the night there, check it out. Stay warm, I hope. And then after that, will be the last state park, which will be uh, Fort Stevens, way up at the very corner of Oregon, right on the peninsula. What a pretty drive through here. You just kind of wind along. Can't be in a hurry. This is kind of a congested area. Just take your time and enjoy the view. Right, this is the town of Nahalem. Nahalem Bay. Should be making a left up here shortly. We'll head on into the park. Park 
RVs everywhere, just see them constantly. Okay, yep, here we go. Gonna make a left here. Got a few miles back here. Made it, Nahalem Bay State Park. The State of Oregon State Park System is probably the best of all. I've never stayed or seen such well manicured parks in my life. They also advertise heavily on TV here out supported by the Oregon State Lottery. That's where they get a bunch of their bucks from but they spend it well. Be sure to check out my website, rvertv.tv. Sign up for the free newsletter. Check out our merch. We got all kinds of activity books, coloring books, brand new recipe cookbook, and even courses. Once again, that's rvertv.tv. All right, made it stop here get checked in I did not have a reservation hopefully it should be okay once I get the site go get parked for the night tomorrow we're gonna go explore this uh, state park Okay, a uh, long drive, a lot of running today. Gonna get backed in, get set up, call tonight in the morning. Guess what? We're gonna go cruise around, check out Mahalem Bay here, State Park. Then uh, we're heading up Fort Stevens next. Check this out. Had a good night's sleep. These trees are so thick, you can't even hear the ocean from your sight. But there it is. That's how close you are to the water where you camp. And look at all the RV sites. This place is huge. Big dunes along the beach. There's different loops. They got yurts here to rent. I've never seen a state park with this much camping. Out that direction's 101. We're a few miles from 101. Later this morning after we explore, we're going to truck north. Go up and find Fort Stevens State Park right on the peninsula. There's also supposed to be a place where you can land a private plane and camp. they got a campground with a little private strip here. Maybe we can find that too. Horses, people bring horses here, dune buggies. You name it, this is Nahalem Bay. What a pretty, pretty place. During the week, you can get in these places without reservations. On the weekend, most of these parks are sold out. So if you're traveling through, always check online for availability. Unless it's during the week, then you can kind of stop in. So far, that's what I found out. None of the sites I know of have uh, sewer. Y'all, but they do have a RV dump. 
yesterday they were lined up 20 deep to use that thing. This one, you could buy ice up here at the check-in shack and firewood. They'll sell it. But, really enjoyed it. But, time to go out and head out of here. What I'm going to do, we'll go over and I'll show you where the airstrip is real quick. And then, uh, the boat launch. We'll go down to the day use area. And then, I'll head on out. Get the bugs off the windshield too for you. Weather's good. Gonna hopefully have sunshine when we get up that Port Stevens. I think so. It's early enough. Okay, straight across. Here's their airport. I wouldn't call it an airport. It's a landing strip with campsites. So if you want to load up your Cessna with a sleeping bag and a tent, here you go. <laughs> then we get parked get a couple pictures. So here you go. Here's a landing strip paved. Right there off to the right, that dirt area, that's where you park your plane. They got little campsites. You can either camp in the trees or pitch a tent. There's uh, Nahalem Bay right there. I've never seen anything like that. Pretty cool, though, huh? Bring your Cessna and a nice chest. Coleman tent. Fishing pole. And you're camping. Pretty neat. And if you head down, now they have horse camps too. They actually have campsites with corrals. All kinds of pathways. You see horses out in the dunes. This is uh, definitely uh, one for horse camping. I've seen horse trailers all over. Pretty interesting, really. Alright, this is the boat dock. Let's get up. I'll walk around a minute. Okay, this goes out to the bay side, Nahalem Bay. Town of parking. Really, it's not been that busy here. see the tide affects it all. Looks like we're at low tide. You can see how far it comes in during high tide. But very peaceful. Beautiful place. All the Oregon parks are peaceful. Amazing. All these places they got free life jackets for kids. What a great idea. Huh? Pretty. Now straight down, that's where all the horse corrals are. I think they had like 18 or 20 sites and they had these big horse corrals. Where I was staying was about a half mile up. You can see the, all the campsites follow the ocean there. Isn't that pretty? Okay, over here's the bay. That's where we were just at. There's the boat launch. And 
that's heading out towards the ocean. See the horse trailer straight out? That's where you can park your horse. That's day use right down there. And that, there's a horse corral right there on the left. There's the dunes. We'll go walk the dunes here in a minute. That's another look back out towards the ocean. Pacific Ocean. All right, we'll just truck over here to the day use area, park. Then we'll go check out the dunes. And we got blue sky, yay. Okay, we're down here at the day use area. There's restrooms. All we gotta do is hike over the dune. Be at the Pacific Ocean. Not too bad of a hike. A little ways from the parking lot. Boy, you can sure feel the wind hit you. The sand is pretty soft, a little tricky to walk in. Oh cool, look, look up ahead, there's some horses. Them horses have no problem getting through this stuff. Wouldn't that be fun, horseback riding on the Pacific Ocean coast, nice. seen signs they have guided tours and you can rent a horse ride people bring in their horses and you can rent it they'll take you around the beach that'd be worth it all right there's the ocean there's your look Time to get on the road. Time to head north. We're getting up close to the end of Oregon here. Fort Stevens is next. Can't wait. And quite a journey coming up here through Oregon. Got to see some uh, really amazing places. I mean, each one of these parks are different. But the only thing that's the same is the ocean. <laughs> what a nice visit here at Nahalem. Uh, such a massive place. I'd come back to this one. But, time to hit the road. We're going to cut over to 101. Start trucking north here. Take advantage of this good weather here, too. They do have supplies back at that state park. Got the gas station. Plus you can run into town here too. Okay, make a left. There is definitely more buildings, houses, people on the northern end up here of Oregon along the coast. Well, this is kind of the last drive. We're heading up to the end stretch of uh, the 101 in Oregon. See the ocean off to the left. 
this is just beautiful here. Hopefully I can find, I'll pull off up here somewhere, we'll get a few photos and whatnot, video. Look at the big rock cliff here on the right, and then the ocean right there. <laughs> pretty, pretty. Yeah, we're going to head up here to Fort Stevens. That Nahalem Bay was nice. Oh, tunnel. Tunnel, tunnel. Yay. I love these things. This one's got lights in it. Isn't this cool? The light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Yay, made it. Too cool. Well, I'll find a place to pull off up here and we'll get a shot of the ocean before we get up too much farther. Cool, here's one. Nice. They got a restroom and everything. So, good place to take a break. Always traffic on this road. Well, it's a main artery. Uh, clear down the coast. 101. Alrighty. Well, let me go down here. I'll get parked. Let's take a little walk. Look at this view. Isn't this pretty? This is perfect. the shadows reach out on the sand of the trees. Pretty. Soak it in. say let's go find that Fort Stevens State Park. say Astoria we're not going all the way to Astoria we will tomorrow tomorrow we cross the bridge Astoria bridge that thing is way up there too I got a little town traffic here 101 cuts through quite a few towns Big old fifth wheel there going south. 
Ocean's right off to the left. Camera's not picking it up, but we're we're following the coast pretty close. You know, everywhere I go along this road, there are RV park after RV park. And I really haven't pointed them out because I've been focused on the state parks. But they are everywhere. There's hundreds of them. I'm sure they're nice. And Now, there's where you want to park a big rig. If you're coming down through here with uh, big rigs, the RV parks. Because most state parks can't take a rig over 30 feet, I think, something like that. There was a few state parks that had sites that were over 40 feet, but they had very few of them. So that's something you'd really want to research before you go to the state park. But if you're in a big rig with a tow vehicle, or say like you got a fifth wheel with the pickup, just park the trailer or the rig and you can run around in your car and still visit all the beaches. Just do the day use areas. close I think that highway should be right up here on the left I think it was 104 or something like that go up to a couple towns one's Warrington and Harrington I think something like that but we're gonna go way out on the peninsula I'm really hoping I can drive to the end like I showed on Google Maps <laughs> that would be so cool Here we go. This is it. Fort Stevens State Park. Okay, we got a little ways to go. I think it's a few miles. Back up this road here. What a pretty place to live. Look at this. Of course, winter time, you're going to get a ton of rain. You pay the price in the winter to live here. Probably, I'm sure they get snow here too as soon as you go inland. Okay, here's the first little town. Small town USA. See logging everywhere, logging trucks. What's the sign say? Fort Stevens, next left. Cool. There's a little store. I want to stop and get a bag of ice before I head into the park. Yeah, look at the shape of the houses. All got all pitched roofs. Bet they get snow here. Cool. Aha, Nanny Mart. Let me pull off here a sec and I, I'm running and get a bag of ice before I get all the way back to the park. Okay, all stocked up. We got store said not too much farther. Make a left up here. Gonna go through another town. And just on the other side of that is Fort Stevens. Okay, make a left here. What I've read online on Google, it's quite a bit. There's uh, some old bunkers, and this used to be a defense post years ago during the world wars uh, protecting our uh, shorelines and ports ton of history of that very old old military uh, places here
much farther. Getting closer. Kind of excited, but also disappointed. This is going to be the end of the Oregon run here, Fort Stevens. But it continues. Going to head over to Astoria and then over to Washington tomorrow. I do not have a reservation for this one. I did call ahead and the guy said he had like 200, 180 sites open today. So I think I'll fit into one of them. Said I could even drive around and take my pick. That'll work. Alrighty, here we are. Ranger Station. Looks like this is where I check in. All right, I'm going to run in, give him some money, get my pass, go find a site, and then we'll go explore this thing. checked in. He assigned me a site, said if I didn't like it, come back. But I'm sure it's going to be fine. But let's go explore this place while we've got the good blue sky and good weather. He said there's even a shipwreck up the road here. So let's go have a little fun first. So I thought we'd check that out first. What the sign say? Shipwreck to the left. Yay. Apparently this one's right in the beach. It's a big steel, rusted steel structure. Been here for a long time. Also, there's been hundreds of shipwrecks along this coast here. Go, trying to get in the Columbia River. I would say this is it. Looks like plenty of parking. Yep. Cool. And we got blue sky. Look at it. Alright, let me get parked. Then we'll go hike down there. It's down on the beach. There's the mighty Pacific. We're right next to the Columbia River too. There's the ocean. There's your wreck. Look at it, it's buried. The rest of it's all under the sand. Look at that thing. Wow. I don't even know. They, they got a brochure on it. I haven't read it yet. Look, there's a stacks of the boat sticking out. Huh. I have to read about this thing. Google it. <laughs> this is a shipwreck on Fort Stevens Beach. Roar 
pour the water non-stop pretty calm day it's warm too it's not bad beautiful here on the coast everyone's getting selfies with this thing wow now there's history but look at the stack sticking up that's part of that ship right here these little pieces sticking up through the sand shows you how deep it's buried okay well we got more to see let's keep on trucking there's one of those uh, concrete or like bunkers or batteries whatever they called them We'll go try to find one of those. There's a couple of them here. Way we go. Yeah, we're way out at the very end of the Oregon. Wait, we're out on a peninsula here. Okay, make a left. well marked here to the right that's where we want to go made it I'll go ahead and get parked then we'll go uh, explore it's supposed to be up on the hillside a little bit I see part of it. There it is. They probably stored their ammo and stuff down here. Probably haunted. Look at them things, huh? Look how big they are. Hi. Spooky looking, huh? Pretty cool though. Yeah. <laughs> Look how thick the concrete is. Concrete's a couple feet thick. Historic site. Well, let's hike up here and see what we got. Quite a few steps. Oh my goodness, look at this old-time coastal gun batteries. This is what protected our coast. I think even through World War II. Been here since like World War I. They used to have cannons mounted to it. The troops would stay underneath. the concrete still intact Can you imagine how this was built there's the old turret I bet big old gun turret huh that's amazing boy if these walls could talk huh I'll have to read up about this I don't know that much about it room with
with a view. Probably had guns mounted in here too. vegetation's growing up. The ocean's right there. I bet that was all cut down when this thing was operational. Okay, I'm out of here. I want to go to the end of that peninsula. I am just chomping to get out there. Let's go. Alrighty. Make a left here, and I want to go to the Columbia River. According to the sign, it's this way. But here it is. This is the very end of the peninsula, like I showed on Google Maps. Unreal. That's the Columbia River, right? I'll get out. Let me park. Let me get out. Right there. That's Columbia River right there. The mouth of it. Cool. There it is. I don't see Lewis and Clark. Right there, that's the mouth of the Columbia River. Empties out into the ocean, right there. Check it out. We did it. We made it. <laughs> Path over here. Supposed to be able to get right down to the water. Let me go take it a sec. Oh, here's a map. Let's check the map. This has to be the end of it. You are here. Look at that. We did it. <laughs> at the very end of the Oregon Peninsula. Nice. Let's check out the Columbia River real quick while we're here. Here it is. We've been looking at the ocean for weeks. There's the river. salmon come up, all the big boats go in to all the ports. Holy moly. Too bad there ain't a boat there right now. That's looking, there's the, going down towards the Astoria. We're going to go across that bridge. There's the Astoria bridge right down there. We're crossing that thing in the morning. looking at a little bay. There's the Columbia River. There's the Astoria Bridge. Right down there. We're crossing. Across the water, there's Washington State. Right down there, there's the mouth of the Columbia that dumps out. There's the jetty that goes straight out in the ocean. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Dumps right out there in the ocean. Cool. Wow, 
I look at that. Where the two waters meet. Well, we did it all together. This is the last of the Oregon coast. You know, even as remote as this is, I still got four bars on my cell phone. <laughs> Great cell phone signal. All right, this is where the big rock jetty is. On the Oregon side to the Columbia, where all the big boats pass. Oh, cool. All right, let me find a parking place. We'll go up in that platform there. Okay, here you go. South Jetty, mouth of the Columbia River. Four engineers. Look at the low viewing platform. Let's go up on it. Check it out. You can feel this thing wobbling <laughs> when you walk on it. All right, here you go. Look at all those rocks protecting the bank. There's the mouth of the Columbia and the ocean. Unbelievable. Too cool for school. Boy, does this thing shake when you're up here. <laughs> Alright, I'm tired. I can go find me a campsite. Okay, what a cool park. Fort Stevens State Park. Right at the very tip of Oregon Peninsula. That was something to see. That was a goal. We made it. We did it. Well, tomorrow, we're going to go uh, cross over that Astoria Bridge. That thing is huge. All right, this is home for the night. Back on the road in the morning. Well, good morning. We're leaving Fort Stevens State Park. Gonna cut back over to the 101. We're gonna cross that massive Astoria Bridge this morning over the Columbia River. Very quiet, peaceful here. Quite a few rigs. But this place sells out too. It's always best to call ahead and try to get a reservation.
to throw away my trash here. I got the dumpsters right here. Make a quick pit stop. I'm going to be missing uh, Oregon State Parks. What a beautiful, well manicured, once again, system that they have here in Oregon on their state parks. Alrighty, going to be making right here, and we're going to head back to 101. They got a lot of sites here, hundreds of campsites. Staff was extremely friendly. I mean, and then uh, that shipwreck and all the other places, you can really see a lot. I didn't explore it all, but there's a ton of history here. You could spend a week going through everything they have to offer here. Highly recommend Fort Stevens uh, State Park. Okay, sorry about the camera being in the sun. It's still early morning. Okay, I'm gonna zigzag my way back to 101, and then we're gonna head north. All right, topped off the fuel. All stocked up, ready to head over to Washington State. Sun's in our face for a few minutes. Here we are, this is 101. We don't go very far. We're almost into Astoria right now. We're gonna cross the Astoria Bridge and that thing is massive. I did that three years ago and uh, they had road construction at the very top of it. Had to sit on top of that thing for like 10 minutes. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. sun's in the camera but this is their little peninsula or bay here it's got a drawbridge but this is not see the big look straight ahead see that big bridge we're gonna go across that thing the entrance to it and try to get underneath it we'll take a quick video of what that thing looks like from underneath there's no toll either you can go both directions no toll that's where you get on right there Like there's some hotels and restaurants right here. Let me pull down in here, see if we can't get a good video of that thing. The closer you get, the bigger it gets. <laughs> oh yeah, look at this. Looks like restaurants and hotels and stuff. Look at all the boats, kind of got a harbor here. Wow, nice. No one's here either. All right, let's get parked. Look at that thing, way up there. I don't know how many hundreds of feet it's up there. All the big boats, they all come in off the ocean and go right underneath here. Too bad there ain't one going right now.
There it is. How'd you like to live underneath that thing? Huh. I think those were apartments. Maybe that was a motel. Look at the span. It's like four or five miles clear across the water here. Once I get over the other side, the goal today, there's a state park, Washington State Park, called Camp Disappointment. And they also have the jetty, and it's the Washington side to the entrance of the Columbia River. And that's where I want to go film. I want to make that peninsula too. All right, we'll get back up here. The entrance to the bridge, is this off to the right? Look at the size of that boulder on that truck. And another semi. That's just what you want to see going over this bridge. <laughs> All right, enough goofing off. We'll make it, hopefully. Don't look over the edge, I'm not. Way we go. What a pretty day, not a bunch of wind either, yet. Got real lucky uh, this morning. I was hoping there'd be no fog. Hate to come over this thing, I bet the fog really block the view. Here we go and we are climbing. I'll have to Google this. I don't know how many feet in the air this thing is. I bet at least, what, 400 feet? but we are way up there. Leaving Oregon. Say so long, Oregon. For now. About right here, three years ago, coming down from Washington is where I had sat. And I had, was pulling the cargo trailer and they had construction going so they had you blocked and you just sat here I mean it's quite the view <laughs> wasn't really expecting it if you're scared of heights you don't want to do that one all right we're going down but look how long this thing is there's Washington straight ahead I think it's like three or four miles long I think they allow bicycles on this thing. It's not very wide. Think all the salmon that run through here every year. Do some serious fishing out here. They got mile markers on here too. Still trucking. Okay, here's the little bridge on the other end. I'm not sure where the state line is. I haven't seen the sign yet. I'm sure we will. I think it's right down the middle of the water. Here we go. I see the sign, see it on top of the bridge? You are now in Washington. Yay, we made it. Made it to Washington State. What a 
pretty, pretty drive across this bridge. Wow. That is really something. Alrighty, we're going to make a left up here. We're going to follow. I think at Camp Disappointment is... Uh, what a name, Camp Disappointment. <laughs> it's about 12 miles from here. find a place to pull off up here. I'll get one more video of the bridge. And this is the Columbia River. And you are now in Washington State. Hey, we'll pull up here with this trucker here. Looks good to me. So there's the bridge, the Columbia River, Pacific Ocean. What an epic trip up the Pacific Coast Highway all the way up through Oregon. In this part two series, we've seen a lot of cool things. From Winchester Bay, clear up to Astoria. Just stop after stop, view after view. These once in a lifetime series will continue throughout the year. We have many more to come. Be some in Washington State, Idaho, more back east, and future ones that are being filmed this year. I thank you all for watching. The journey does continue. Talk soon.